Welcome back to Fourth and Pain, the only pro wrestling show to be hosted by an NFL player, a weight loss champion. That right there, boys and girls, that is Adam Eugene Carricker. Hi, Charles. Hello, Adam. I'm former wrestling announcer and term weight loss champion Chuck Carroll. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Fourth and Pain and join us right here each and every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, 1067 The Fan, the fastest hour in pro wrestling and pro football. But, Adam, I thought, wouldn't it be fun? To give out our season-ending awards, our year-end awards, and who better to help bestow these these prestigious title belts upon your teammates than one Mr. Grant Paulson. Welcome to the show, Grant. Thanks so much, guys. Good to talk to both of you again, fellas. How are you? I'm doing very well. Magnificent. And it is such a pleasure to have you here, Grant. I can't begin to tell you the thrill that I get every time that you're on Fourth and Pain. So... <laughs> Here's uh, here's kind of what we're thinking. You know what? We're doing this whole year-end award thing, and I said we're going to be giving out various title belts. So here are the categories, and here's what we're giving out. Offensive player of the year, they're going to be getting the TV title. Why? Because it's a flashy position. Defensive player of the year, hardcore. Adam, you define hardcore. So think back to those old WWF title belts, the one Mick Foley would carry around, that they were always up for grabs all smashed, battered, held together with pieces of tape. Hardcore title will go to our Defensive Player of the Year. Special Teams Player of the Year, for some reason, maybe it has to do with who we think is going to get the belt. We're going to give it the Cruiserweight and title belt. MVP, the overall MVP, no surprise here, Grant, the world title for this one. And my personal favorite, the Newcomer of the Year, will be getting the Divas title. So with that, we are going to start with the Offensive Player of the Year, Adam Carricker, you make your pick for fourth and pain. Who oh, do you have? I mean, to me, it comes down. Actually, there's three guys it comes down to. There's Pierre Garçon, there's Robert, and then there's Alfred Morris. Alfred comes in. He sets the Redskin rushing record. He wins the fourth and pain belt more than anybody else three t uh, four times this year. So I got to give the Offensive Television Championship Award to Alfred Morris. I'm happy to concur with that. There's no more deserving guy. Four-time fourth and paint champion. Just an unbelievable run for him in his rookie season. Grant Paulson, how do you see this? Who are you giving your TV title to? Well, uh, like Adam, I think there were a couple of really good candidates. Robert Griffin among them. I actually thought long and hard about giving this belt and this award to Trent Williams for all that he did at left tackle, making the Pro Bowl for the first time, responding from a lot of criticism, which he brought on himself this offseason after a drug suspension last December, and having one of the best seasons by any left tackle in the National Football League, I think he's become one of the premier premier players at his spot. But I have to go with Alfred Morris as well. You're talking about a 1,600-yard rookie season in league history. Only two rookies have ever rushed for more yards than Morris did in 2012. He did it as a sixth-round pick in a scheme that the league just couldn't catch up to. He was the first Redskin in five years to rush the ball 300 times. He ended up at 335. He carried them down the stretch. He went for two bills when they clinched the division. Alfred Morris posted every single Sunday. Offensively, there was no bigger piece to the puzzle. I got to give it to the Florida Atlantic product. I like it. Next up on the docket, the Defensive Player of the Year and the mashed-up hardcore title. No more fitting title for a defensive player. Adam Carricker, the fourth and paint honors, please. I mean, some of the candidates to me, Rob Jackson came on the scene, played really well. Ryan Kerrigan had even better numbers than his rookie year. London Fletcher, as always. But I'm, I'm going to go. This is hardcore. This is smash mouth. This is in your face. So I'm going I'm to go along that defensive line, and I'm going to go to Barry Cofield. Now, a lot of people are going to overlook him because he plays nose tackle. He had nearly 40 tackles this year, which doesn't sound like a lot, but for a 3-4 nose guard, that is a lot. He had two and a half sacks. He was in the quarterback's face all the time. And another thing you have to keep in mind, he wasn't supposed to play a whole lot of nickel this year that was supposed to be myself it was supposed to be rack and he ended up taking probably a third to maybe half again the snaps he was supposed to and that adds up throughout the season and yet at the end of the year throughout the playoff run and the playoff game he was all over the place making tackles playing well I mean honestly I thought he should have gone to the Pro Bowl at least at least been you know one of the replacement guys but he's going to be our defensive hardcore champion for the year and with that sack dance, I'm going to bestow the title of Shockmaster on him and dig deep into your WCW archives to get that reference. Grant Paulson, who is your hardcore title going to on the defense? I'm actually going to go with London Fletcher, who yet again played in every 
single game this season. He has never missed a game in an NFL career that spans back to 98 and playing as violently and physically as he does, playing a position that demands as much from your body as inside linebacker, that's stunning. He's 37 years old. He just completed his 15th season in the league, and he doesn't seem to be slowing down. He made 139 tackles, not only a team high, but top 10 in the NFL. He had three sacks, the most he's had in any year since 05. Posted a career-high five interceptions, including stringing together picks in three straight games during the seven-game winning streak predicated largely on a defensive turnaround and defensive takeaways. He defended 11 passes. He forced a fumble. There was nothing this defense needed that he didn't do. He was the defensive player of the month in December while playing through injuries. He couldn't even practice, guys. It's right. so hard. Adam will tell you, to play well on Sunday when you can't practice all week, Mike Shanahan said, quote, I've never seen anything like it in my life. i got to go with London Fletcher for all those reasons, but I will tell you, I'm, I'm really glad that Character said what he did because I think if you pulled 100 fans, none of them would have said Barry Cofield, and he'd be my runner-up. He means so much to that front. I love that pick by him as well. And you got to love that sack dance, right, Grant? Tell you what, the Taser sack dance is the best <laughs> celebration in football. I wish he'd do it more. He's really kept it under wraps as much as he can here in D.C. I believe my calculations are correct, and it's tough to add up one and one, but I think he's done it two times now in his time in the district. I'd like to see it every time he makes a big play. I love it. I've actually talked to him about that and asked him about that, and we just need to win more games. You notice he did it when we're on that winning streak. It's all about winning. Sure. You don't want to detract from a team when you're losing, but you want to add to it when you're winning. All right, and speaking of additions, let's uh, add to our title distribution. The Cruiserweight title going to the Special Teams Player of the Year, Adam Carricker, again, the fourth in paint honors. We, we made it the Cruiserweight because this individual every year has lost a, a significant amount of weight, and he lost 20 pounds again this offseason to go from, I believe, 265, 270 to 245, 250. It's Lorenzo Alexander. Who else could it be? Every time you watch a kickoff, he's blowing up the, the wedge, he's blowing up blockers, and he's blowing up the ball carrier. I mean, honestly, I think Reed Dowdy is underrated in this area, but it's got to be Lorenzo Alexander. Grant, who is your cruiserweight title going to? Yeah, there's some really good players on teams in Burgundy and Gold. Reed Dowdy's tremendous, who Adam just mentioned. Niles Paul's fantastic in coverage as a gunner, getting down the field on punts, most notably, but in any capacity, he's just a football player. But this one's not debatable, it's not disputable. Lorenzo Alexander isn't just the best special teams player with the Redskins. And the Pro Bowl's evidence of this, he's probably the best special teams defender in all the league. This is where he's an ace, and he provides so much for this organization. He's a free agent, and my hope is he's about to get paid because the Redskins really can't afford to let their special teams captain go. He's self-made. I mean, this is a guy who was bouncing around on practice squads in Carolina and Baltimore was with other organizations, comes to the Redskins and first gets on the field in short yardage, goal line situations as an offensive lineman. He's played seemingly every position other than quarterback and kicker with this <laughs> team. And now he's solidified himself after dropping all the weights out of mention as a valued and viable inside backer and a really good player on teams. This is easy. It's not close. It's Lorenzo. All right, guys, we got about three minutes left. Kind of got a hustle here, but we've got two awards left, and I love this one. Newcomer of the Year, we are giving out the Divas title, and Adam Carricker, I know who this is going to, but pleased to be shedding some light, my friend. I apologize for the title, for, for the name of this belt, but we frankly ran out of belts, and the Divas kind of fit. I'm, it's, it's, well, you're a kicker. It's Kai Forbath, <laughs> because for a long time, we've been looking for a good kicker, and I felt, you know, like Graham was good, and then they released him, and we tried... Um, who do we bring in? Uh, David, uh, uh, shoot, who, Billy Cundiff. We will be editing that. But anyways, we brought in Billy. It didn't work out, and then Kai came in, and he made, I believe, 15 straight kicks before he finally missed. The guy has been money. Again, I apologize for the name of the title, but it is kind of funny, but congratulations. Davis you are title. the newcomer of the year. Davis title, kicker. It just seems to fit. And a one-time <laughs> fourth and pain champion. At Absolutely. That. Grant Paulson, Divas title. I know you've been waiting your whole life to give this one out. Who's it going to? I have been. It's not going the way it did in my dreams for all those years. I'm actually going to give the Divas title and the MVP to the same person, so I'll tip my hat. But I mean, the newcomer of the year has to be Robert Griffin. 
to, to establish himself in year one as one of the league's best quarterbacks, toughest players to defend. We can talk more about him in a moment, but guys, my only hope in looking ahead for this football team, but selfishly as someone who covers the club and just for this fan base in general, is that we get to see him being special so early and often in 2013. Yeah, and you got to figure that Divas title is going to help him on that long road to recovery, at least keep him warm at night. Uh, so with that, it is time to hand out the world title for the overall MVP. Adam Carricker, just as Grant said, I don't think there's any question. Robert Griffin III. I mean, we've been, we've been looking for a franchise quarterback around here for years. We've got it. He's the future. Uh, I wish him the best. Hopefully a speedy recovery, get him back on the field next year in the playoffs, and someday the Super Bowl, hopefully next this next season. Grant? your lasting impressions of Robert Griffin III this year? Well, just how much he meant to this organization on and off the field, what he provided in terms of being a spark and being uh, someone that this fan base could rally behind and have faith in to help turn everything around. And then just the ripple effect he sent through this offense. The more it's had the best year, I give him the Offensive Player of the Year honors. But MVP is about value. He changed everything for this running game. He made Morris's life easier. He helped his wide receivers get better. He is a franchise-altering talent. For years, Redskins fans have looked around and said, I wish that guy was on my team when they watched the league's elite players play. Now they've got one of those guys on their team. Grant H. Paulson, there's nobody better in the business. Give him a follow on Twitter, at Grant H. Paulson. And Grant, enjoy your offseason, my friend. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing more movies laying around a lot more and genuinely uh, being more lazy. So this is going to be exciting for me. And eating more buffalo wings. (laughs) <laughs> that is absolutely going to happen. All right. Grant H. Paulson, those were our year-end picks. We'll be back on the other side with Goldberg. Don't go anywhere. This here is Fourth and Pain. <laughs>